Hey, it's Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit, and today we're going to do something different. Home automation, not only can we control a home, but it's nice to be able to monitor the home. And in this case, we're going to talk about monitoring systems that are running the home. This is my home assistant monitoring to make sure that the computer, the Raspberry Pi actually that's running it, is doing okay. And this side, I'm going to talk about using speedtest.net and measuring my internet health to make sure my internet's okay. The reason these are really important to me is my home automation system runs on a Pi 3B. A Raspberry Pi 3B is not really considered a super powerful computer anymore. There's the 4 that's out. The B Plus was an upgrade. So I was kind of curious, do I need to upgrade that to a full PC or a 3B Plus? And what I think you'll find from this tutorial is how to get the data to understand from your home automation system how to monitor it to know if you need to upgrade or when you need to upgrade. On the internet side, I work from home quite a bit right now due to the coronavirus, and I've had suspicions that my internet performance hasn't been consistent. So this here will help me understand where my internet is right now, and also I can monitor it over time. The other thing we're gonna talk about is how to build a Grafana dashboard. While it's nice to have an at a glance to figure out where your stuff is, this is very useful to understand where it is over time. So for instance, here I can see my processor is at 6%, but how has it been over the last 24 hours? And I can get a feel for, do I have enough computer? My Raspberry Pi has done quite well handling the home automation load. As a matter of fact, it's barely even stretching itself with about 6 to 10% usage. The other thing I can see here, this is my internet over time. And I can see that I've actually do have some glitches where my speed goes down dramatically and so it's not just my imagination. I do have something going on with my internet and it gives me a data point that I can investigate further. Now what I'll do is probably monitor this over the next couple weeks and try to see if there's any trends or if I see any consistent times. For memory, the Raspberry Pi 4s have a couple of different memory configurations. I can see that I'm using about half the memory uh, at any given time. There's one gigabyte on the Raspberry Pi 3 I'm using. These spikes all correlate to the speed test running and they're very short, so I'm okay there. So I can tell that my hardware is running my home automation system just fine with these graphs. The first thing we wanna talk about is the integration for the system monitor. System monitor is a built-in integration. It actually comes into Home Assistant as a sensor. Typically what I start out with is I go to the home automation integration page and then I just paste it in here to start out. And this gives me my spacing and kind of uh, the basics here. So I can see I've got my disk use percent and arg. Uh, there's another one from memory free. But what I want to do is if you scroll down here, you'll see that there's all of these things. There's stuff for networking. This one here is the one I really care about. What is my processor usage at any given time? And it's basically just processor underscore use. So what I will do here is add in type processor underscore use. And I can see that that needs to be spaced out. Now I watch this green check mark over here real closely to make sure that I don't have any errors. Cause keep in mind, if you corrupt this, it kind of puts you in a rough state. Once you have it where you want it, you're going to hit save and then you'll go to your supervisor system and reboot. The next one we want to set up is speedtest.net. And again, to keep consistent, we're going to go to that page. Now this one has a trick to it and it actually took me a second to figure out. So we'll just copy and paste this into our configuration file here. And the thing I found out once you do this is it doesn't work. And if you do some searches, you'll find that there's actually been a problem with speedtest.net for a while on a lot of machines. The reason being is you have to specify a server ID and the way you do that is you indent in and you put a server ID like that in. So now the question is, where do you get this magical number? Uh, what is this number mapped to? And I'm going to put this page in the comments. This is basically the XML file of all of the servers that speedtest.net uses. One of the things that makes speedtest.net so powerful is it's got servers all over the world and that really helps you get accurate speed and latency information. So you're going to want to find a server that's next to you. So I just did um, as a sample, like search for Houston. Here's the uh, 
the server next to Houston, and this is the ISP that it's working through. But there's the magic number, there's the ID number, and you, you would put that into uh, your home assistant right here. That seems to make speedtest.net work. Otherwise, I was getting undefined and it was never updating. By default, this will update every hour. If you want to have it go more than every hour, there's a couple of settings. Here's scan interval, and like I said, there's a default of 60 minutes. Now, once you have these, the next thing to do is to figure out how to pull them in. So services right here, speedtest.net actually has a service to, ran, to run the speed test more than once an hour. It has a way of doing it manually. Matter of fact, one of the settings for it is to set it as manual so that it only runs when you want it to. I like to have it every hour, but I also like to have the ability to run it manually as well. For here, if we do, if we search for things like disk, we see the entity ID that we're looking for here, sensor disk use percent home. This is how the system monitor, um, let's see, the system monitor shows up. If I do processor, whoop, there's processor usage. And the other one we want to search for, uh, let's say I think I did memory. Yeah, memory usage, sensor.memory use. These entity IDs are important to know because we're going to use them when we go build our UIs. And so typically what I'll do is go to developer tools and search through here to see what shows up. So the next thing we're going to, want to do is actually build out our Lovelace UI to look like this here. And this is very simple. We're going to configure UI. We'll start out from scratch. We'll call it system monitor demo. And here it is. And now we can start adding our, um, our UI. The reason I'm showing this is you're going to probably want different things than I picked. So I just want you to understand, okay, you know, you, you're going to select them and then here you're going to build out your UI for them. For the gauge, let's see, the disk usage one. That's how I did the, the gauge for disk usage. You can give it a different name here. So if you want it to be friendlier, whatever you type here will show up underneath. And then you get to choose your minimum and maximum. You can also do severity, which is kind of cool. So I can say if it gets over 75%, make it red. If it's over 50%, make it yellow. And if it's zero, it's green. And then I actually get color coding here. And I can change these values to whatever I want. And there we go, there's our first gauge. So what we're gonna do now is just build this out. Okay, on the other side, we're gonna to want to talk about the speed test uh, stuff and we can do it as a gauge as well for now. So if I type start typing speed tests, you see they show up, there's the download, ping and upload. Now the download and upload being a gauge is no, no big deal. But the other one, the ping, I'm going to show you something a little bit different. So there's download and upload. For ping, we're going to do a, a history graph. And what that will do is we can get a nice graph here of how it's going over time. We can do that with any of them, but I just thought it was a little bit uh, cooler way of, of showing it. Now, as I said, the speed test only happens once an hour. So we're gonna to wanna to have a way of calling the service to overload this. And I showed you where the service was. How do we call a service? Well, we're gonna add a button. And as we add this button, we'll learn a couple of interesting things. So here's the default. We don't need a hold action, so we can delete that right off the bat. For the tap action, we're gonna want call service. And the service we'll put underneath here, it's gonna be speedtest.net.speedtest. Uh, we need an icon and the icon is interesting because I typically see something like MDI colon and I wanted to understand how do you know what your icon choices are? Well, if you go to materialdesigniconscom this, this is where the MDI comes from and you can search for things. So if I search for speed, I will get some icons and the ones that are circled in orange are basically um, open source. They're, they're from the community. I can actually click on that and actually filter everything down to only those, which is nice. 
So let's see, so we'll do a speed here. You can see there's a ton of icons too. There's just quite a bit. So these are all open source. So um, this one here, if I mouse over, it says the word speedometer. Right, there it is, speedometer. And that's what the icons look like. And so to make that icon show up here, I can say, oh, I can say MDI speedometer. And there it is. And so now my button has um, basically an, an icon here. I don't need state color. Uh, show name I want on there, that, that would be good. If we're gonna do that, then we should probably give it a name. Um, and it's run speed test. And you see that showing up down here. So that's how I set my icon and everything. It will call service when it's hit. I hit save. And there we go. So now I've got a manual button override for my speed test. We've got a little history graph for our ping. So this is what we're going to build in Grafana. Uh, basically the three charts for a memory processor and disk and then speed test here. Very simple dashboard. So we'll start here. Um, we're going to create a new dashboard. We'll add a query. And one of the key things we need to know is what the measurement is. So the way we're going to find that out is we'll go and add the end of the ID and we'll search for it here. So let's do speed test dot first. There's speed test download. And once you fill this in here, we can then go to measurement and it will give us, it will filter it down for us, which is really, really nice. Now, again, we see our dots. We can do uh, fill uh, none, or I'm sorry, yeah, fill none, and it will connect the dots. The problem is this implies that the speed actually went down, like the speed was this value between here. And that's not really how speed test works. Speed test works once an hour. So there's a different setting here. When you say um, fill, we can say zero. Because that's really what's happening, we do a speed test and then nothing, and then we do a speed test. And so this is more representative of how things are working. Now I wanna do the download and upload on the same graph. So I'm gonna add another query. And I showed this before, end of the ID, we're gonna do speed test. Let's see, that was download, so we'll do upload here. Yeah, download and upload. And so now the upload speed will get applied over it. The other thing is, if I wanna change this down here, let's see. We'll also make this fill zero. Oh, and a measurement, we gotta do a measurement. There we go. We're gonna want these to be something uh, more meaningful. So I'm gonna say download speed for an alias and you'll see it get updated there. And then we'll say upload speed here. And now I have a nice clean, uh, basically legend for my graph here. The panel title is on the third one down here. We'll say speed test. And there we go. We've got our speed test one up and running. Let's do the other ones real quick. Um, again, you're gonna see the pattern. I'll do it one more time and then we'll go fast. Uh, for this one, processor usage. Then I go to the measurement and see its percentage. Um, fill none to get that filled in. And then give it a name here. Third one here, processor. There we go. Remember, it, we can re rearrange these. Okay, I'm going to go fast for the next two. There we go, there's my dashboard. Uh, something else to keep in mind is you probably don't want last six hours for these. You're probably gonna want a lot longer time range to see how things are really going day by day. And, you know, there you go. So what can we do with this now? Now I can look at my processor usage and see do I need to upgrade my home automation system or I can look for anything that might be affecting the health of it, uh, maybe a badly performing module, stuff like that. My internet speed, if my internet speed seems to be slow, I can do this over the next couple weeks and really get a feel for how my performance is. I can also start seeing if I can get other data points to correlate to what's going on uh, when I see something like this here where it goes drops down quite a bit at 5 p.m. 
And the other thing I can do is start seeing, does it happen every day at 5 p.m.? Like, is there any kind of a pattern to the, the loss there? The next video is gonna be getting this working on the, on the magic mirror. Uh, I know I promised that in the last video, but I wanted to have a little bit cooler data. data. And honestly, with the coronavirus putting me at home, I was hitting issues that I needed solved and I needed this data now. So I had to put it before that video. Thank you so much. I appreciate all the likes and the positive comments and the community support. I will talk to you in the next video.